Hi Cancer, this is your March mid-month tarot reading will have three separate spreads in this mid-month reading. The first spread is going to be on love, it could be new love, uh, love from the past, existing love, whatever comes up. In the second spread we'll be looking at some good news for you in the second half of March and spread number three will be an advice for you for the remainder of this month. Please like, share and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is on love, uh, Cancer. I don't think it's love from the past. I think it's either new or existing love. All right, so we have the Eight of Pentacles, clarified by strength. We have the Knight of Cups, uh, clarified by the Ten of Pentacles. We have the Ten of Cups. In the potential outcome, we have the Ace of Swords with the star and uh, the Queen of Cups. And we also have the Four of Wands on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a fellow water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We also have Leo, Aquarius. But uh, you could be dealing with pretty much any zodiac sign. This is a general reading. Like I said, this is either an existing love or um, a new love. We start with the Eight of Pentacles, right? The Eight of Pentacles is a card of work, business, and finances. Or it's a card of diligently working on something, perfecting something, putting time, energy, effort into something. If this is a new person coming into your life, I think this person has something to do with the way you make your money or could be making your money starting at some point in the second half of March. Perhaps you're about to start a new job or maybe a new person will be joining uh, the company you work for. Um, this person could be working in the same building, they could be working for maybe another company that the company you work for works with them. <laughs> if you're going to some kind of a conference, uh, this person could be there. I think this person has something to do with the way you make your money or will be making money, right, with the Eight of Pentacles. If this is an existing person, that you've been already kind of seeing each other, you could be making it formal and official in the second half of March. You're going to be announcing it to all your co-workers or, and to the whole wide world that the two of you are actually together. All right? <laughs> if this is a new person, you're going to be um, experiencing some interesting things, right? First of all, uh, the Eight of Pentacles is qualified by strength. Strength could be a Leo. You're dealing with strength could be a card of somebody who is holding back. So if this is somebody you already work with, up until this point they were holding back, perhaps because it was a bit un, you know, inappropriate. It could could have been against the company policy. <laughs> All right. But at the same time, <clears throat> strength is also a card of pure raw passion. All right. So especially if, uh, like I said, if this is somebody you work with. So perhaps you see this person every day or you see this person whenever you see them, when you come to work and when you see them in the same building, when you see them, when they their company uh, shows up and you have to deal with them and uh, you feel this pull towards this person. And at some point, it's no longer going to be just a pull. The two of you will, um, you know, have a very passionate encounter, right? Strength is a card of pure raw passion. All right, <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'm just gonna get straight to the point, uh, Cancer. We have three marriage cards on the table. Not one, not two, but three. The Ten of Pentacles, the Ten of Cups, and the Four of Wands. Three, all right? <laughs> the Knight of Cups right next to the Eight of Pentacles could be a fellow water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, but that's the most loving, uh, the most romantic knight out of all four knights. All right, uh, this knight is often referred to as the knight in the shining armor. It's clarified by the first commitment and marriage card. Then the ten of cups right next to it is the second commitment and marriage card. You see, it's not going to take that. If this is somebody you're already with, like I said, you're going to be announcing it to the whole wide world that you two of you together, right? If this is somebody you don't work with and uh, this is somebody who is whom you're already with, um, you're going to be putting time, effort, whatever is necessary into this. You guys are going to be taking it to the next level with those three marriage cards. In the potential outcome, we have the Ace of Swords with a star and the Queen of Cups. You're the Queen of Cups, Cancer. I think it's a safe assumption unless you're dealing with a fellow water sign. And uh, the Ace of Swords often comes through as the word yes. Okay, And I think that's exactly what it is. It's a yes. <laughs> the star in the middle could be an Aquarius, you know, but it's a card of a wish come true. You know, something people usually wish for or hope for for a very long time. And on the bottom of the deck, we have the third commitment on marriage card. So I think you're definitely going to be, you know, 
j getting into a commitment with this individual definitely before the end of March and uh, even if it is a brand new person uh, by the end of March the two of you will be talking marriage with this person 100% <laughs> all right really happy for you cancer congratulations so here's some good news for you, Cancer, uh, for the second half of March. We have the Queen of Swords, clarified by the Page of Pentacles. We have the Knight of Pentacles. We have the High Priestess. And uh, we also have the Six of Cups. Now on the bottom of the deck, you could be dealing with an Air Sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. We also have Earth, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Maybe water. <laughs> Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. I usually go with court cards if any show up. So we got this Queen of Swords, right? Um... This person is somebody from your past, okay? And I think it has something to do with work, you know? Something to do with work and the work from the past. So I am assuming this is a job offer or a business offer, an investment offer from somebody you already know, okay? And this is supposed to be good news for you, Cancer, all right? So yes, the Queen of Swords could be an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If it's not uh, an air sign, this is somebody who is very straightforward, very direct, somebody who is very experienced, okay? Somebody who perhaps got you a job in the past, maybe it's a recruiter or somebody you used to work with, okay? Perhaps they want you to go back to that same workplace or if this is somebody you used to work with, they could have started a new job and that new workplace has an opening, opening and they, they're going to think of you because you would be like a perfect fit right for that new for that position uh, the six of cups on the bottom of the deck is a card of somebody from the past in this case the queen of swords is classified by the page of pentacles and then we have the knight of pentacles in the middle yeah a job offer a job offer or a business offer okay and uh, the high priestess right next to the deck it could be a card of intuition okay but at the same time it could be a card of a secret so perhaps it's going to be like secret negotiations or they may ask you if you are to accept this job just keep it under the wraps for now for whatever reason i don't think because they're lying to you or, or anything like that i don't think so it could be like a legitimate reason to just keep it under wraps for now or again it could be your intuition uh, kicking in i i don't see this person trying to hurt you no so whatever your intuition tells you, <laughs> do you want to go back to that workplace or do you want to start a new job with the person you used to work with? Up to you. All right? Cool. Here's an advice for you, Cancer, for the remainder of March. We have the Ace of Pentacles, the Eight of Wands, clarified by the Fool, the Sun and the Eight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Aries, Leo, or any Zodiac sign. i got to be honest with you, Cancer. This advice has to do with the love spread, the first spread. I was looking at it and I can't think of any other way to interpret this, right? We have the Eight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. We had the Eight of Pentacles in the first spread, okay? This is a different deck, by the way, I use different decks for different spreads. And uh, if this is somebody you're already with and you work together, um, the advice for you is to, you know, make it, um, you know, announce it. Move forward with this person. Don't just be like sneaking <laughs> around so nobody knows about the two of you. Go ahead. If this is a new person coming into your life, the advice is the same. Go ahead. Okay? As a matter of fact, yeah, it will make you very happy. It definitely leads to a, you know, a golden opportunity. And uh, as we saw in the first spread with the, the galore <laughs> of the commitment of marriage cards, uh, it definitely leads to marriage, right? So perhaps um, you're going to be questioning it a little bit and this is just the way of the universe to confirm, yes, this is the real deal, yes, this is something that's going to be in your life forever, <laughs> right? This is a confirmation, right? The Ace of Pentacles, the first card that came out, often comes through as a card of a proposal. It really does. It, it is one of the proposal cards in the tarot deck. And uh, there is a pathway in the right bottom corner of that Ace of Pentacles. This is a pathway to new life. The Ace of Pentacles always comes from somebody who is ready to settle down, ready to start a family, you know, ready to get serious. Then we have the Eight of Wands, clarified by the Fool. The Eight of Wands is a card of uh, the Cupid's Arrows. It's also a card of travel, perhaps travel, a trip, maybe somehow is a part of this equation. And uh, the Fool clarifying that um, it's a card of taking a leap of faith, just going for it, all right? With the full card, people don't don't hold back. Don't hold back. With the full card, people go for it. 
It could be an Aries you're dealing with. The Sun right next to the deck uh, could be a Leo you're dealing with. But the, the Sun is a card of clarity and it's the happiest card in the deck. And to me, if you've been following me for a while, I'm sure you've heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it one more time just in case. Whenever the Fool and the Sun cards come out in the same spread, uh, I always point out the similarities between those two cards. You see the, in the person on the full card, the gesture of that person with the hands, with the arms spread out. That's exactly the gesture I see uh, in the sun card uh, that the, the child riding that horse has. The same exact gesture to me. Also to me it's a gesture of a very happy person. And uh, the sun, like I said, is the happiest card in the deck. So the advice for you is to move forward or give it a shot if this is a new person. Alright, so that's what I have for you, um, Cancer, for this reading, for this time period. If this video resonates with you, please like it. Please also share and subscribe. And uh, other than that, Cancer, have an amazing the rest of March.